guys welcome back to another reaction video today we're checking out mr beasts building a hundred wells in africa without further ado let's get to this this is the first of a hundred wells we're gonna build in this video oh, water. Oh, 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 you just witnessed a small village in kenya get access to unlimited clean drinking water in less than a second one down 99 okay. more Wow. Wells in Africa to go. You're gonna love this video. Combined, these 100 wells are gonna give around half a million people fresh water to drink. And after building some more wells on this side of Kenya, we flew south to the school system of Nairiri. And let's just say they were really happy to see us. How's it going? It's not expecting this. Aww. Aww. Thank you for the welcome. I'm not even sure how to react. <laughs> I appreciate it, everybody. This village threw a welcome ceremony upon our arrival, and Nolan got really into it. <laughs> Nolan's the most awkward person I've ever met. And that's a lot coming from me. And after being shown around the school... Here comes our guest. How's it going? Oh, you having a good day? <laughs> it's nice meeting you. One of the teachers showed me where the students currently get their water, which is from this river. That's extremely unsafe to drink. This is where your students used to get water from? Yes. This is crazy. Yeah. You know, students complaining of diarrhea, in infections like typhoid mm. because this is the water we've been using so yeah. we try to treat but you see look at it, it you know but at the end of the day life has to move on you have to get some water anyway this situation is obviously extremely sad these children's lives are being limited and sometimes cut short from being forced to drink unsafe water but at least for this village we're gonna put an end to it right now i don't think this yeah, john's so gonna nice. fit <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can find some water. Oh, oh. It is raining! It's beautiful! After the water comes out of the ground, it's fed into enormous barrels like this one. And once they're built into the water towers, all of the neighboring villages will not only have clean drinking water, but a pressurized water source as well. Which, in short, means no more doing laundry and unsafe water. And pull! On a scale of one to Nolan's mom, how heavy is it? Nolan's mom times two! Oh god. Dude, I'll push you off of this. <laughs> Whoa. All right, here we go. Under control. We built 20 more wells in Kenya, and after we were done, Bro has another well in. Don't worry, I have more water in my other shoe. <laughs> and just so you know how we built these first 29 wells, we used this giant drill to dig hundreds of feet into the ground, past the polluted sources, and into an enormous aquifer of pure drinkable water. After that, we spent time installing pipes so that people all around Africa can access water from spigots like this one in Nairiri. Let's see how it tastes. Like water. Mm. It took me about a minute to fill this five gallon drum. How much water can this provide a day? 3,600 gallons a day. Not only will this well cover the 400 kids at this school, but literally the entire neighborhood and village around this school can use this well. We say thank you for the water. Oh, no problem. <laughs> this thing can basically pump nonstop for 30 years. What you would life? think that having an effect of this magnitude would require the resources and funding of a large government, but that's not true. Solving this problem is possible and something humanity should all be putting effort in to fix. What's the secret of success? To be honest, just find something you love doing and do it for a long period and eventually you'll succeed. So I'm going to bring it super close. See us? Is that cool? Yes. If you look up, it's recording. <laughs> Alright, well I'm going to get close. Alright. <laughs> yeah, you can see yourself. We were also able to install a well for this village, and this village, and these 12 other villages. And while we were finishing these wells, we were also able to update one of their schools with brand new computers. How are they liking it? They really like, they like them. Glad to see it turned out well. And we also updated the classrooms with new furniture, installed shelves and filled them with new books, donated a soccer ball for every student, and even put modern whiteboards and projectors in all the classrooms. Do you guys like the projector? Yes. <laughs> we were using a chalk and yeah. then a lot of dust, but today everything is clean. We truly appreciate it. No problem. It's the least we could do. But then when we flew out to the side of the 45th well, we realized this community had it even harder. Every time they need to get water, they need to take a treacherous mile-long hike through the jungle. And that mile-long hike also happens to be on a giant mountain. I wake up very early, about 4 o'clock, so that I can fetch water for the school. We I know that's fetching struggle. water here. That place is very slippery. 
but the chances of getting an injury is, is very high. So while we worked on their well, the community took me to see how they currently source their water. You guys would have to make this trip how many times a day? Two times. Two times a day. Oh, wow. So a typical student would carry something like this? Yeah. Oh, God. If 200 students did this every day, how hard could it be? It could be very hard. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. <laughs> Dang, this is very steep. We're just walking down this mountain forever. <laughs> every day. It was actually surprising how difficult this hike was. And these people go through all of that just to get to the spigot. That water is still unsafe to drink. This is where you guys get your water from normally? Yes. And filled with water, these jugs can weigh up to 40 pounds, which is insane for these children to be carrying up this mountain. The ladies can carry two of those. Oh. I totally can as well then. And as soon as these jugs were filled, it was time to head all the way back up. Hurry up, let's go. He's not even sweating or anything. I got it, I got it. <laughs> and now, instead of spending hours a day for unsafe water, their new well is only 10 feet away from the school. So, they can just fill it up here now. I'm too tired. And so we were on our way to the next village where we built our 46 well, but we ran into a little problem. We found out that this village is divided in half by this huge dangerous river. It may not look like much now, but when the rainy season comes, the water comes up this high and literally swallows this bridge. And why this bridge is such a big deal is the village is over there, the hospital and schools are over there. So they're crossing this bridge multiple times a day. Despite how dangerous this bridge is, it's their only option. This river when it is swollen, can sweep away people, students, or even animals. In the recent past, we have lost about three people trying to cross this river. This loss of life is insane and absolutely unacceptable. The moment we heard about this, we knew we had to help. So while we started work on a new bridge that would let them reach their well, we then traveled over 2,000 miles from Kenya to the country of Zimbabwe. We've been in Africa for over a week, and we still have a lot more wells to do. Yeah. You kind of smell. I know, it's weird. I showered this morning. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I, if you let me finish, I can put my arms down. Can I count on you two to finish these wells with me? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. First on the agenda was to check out a local hospital that was in dire need of clean water. Upon entering, we learned how big of an impact this clinic had on the village. How many kids do you guys give birth to a year here? In a month, about 50. Two, 600 births a year? <laughs> wow. <laughs> but unfortunately, the pregnant mothers at this clinic have to walk over a mile just to get water and then carry these heavy buckets all the way back. However, the good news is we paid for the construction of a new modern well for them. All that needed to be done now was to turn it on. All right, Nolan, are you ready? I'm ready. Over. Let me get a dramatic zoom in. Nolan, I pressed the button. Is it working? It's flowing. Oh. <laughs> Want to go check it out? Have yes. Points? Let's do it. I love how people are immediately just getting water right now. This is easily the coolest thing ever. Uh, Nolan here is a professional dancer. Yeah. He will join. How do I always end up dancing? What is he doing? <laughs> oh gosh. I won't make you watch this anymore. Besides ensuring access to clean water, a lot of the students at this village lack transportation. So we decided to give all of them new bicycles. I know it looks like a lot of kids, but we bought a lot of bikes. Full disclosure, I don't know how to ride a bike. Jimmy only knows how to give away bikes. Never learned how to ride one. Let's break in all the new bicycles. Three, two, one, go. Oh, everyone's passing me. Be careful, I don't know how to ride a bike. I don't want to hit anyone. You want to ride it? All right, go for it, little man. Okay. And after giving away the bikes, we continue building wells until we reach... Well number 69! This solar-powered well is specially designed to aid the farmers in this village by providing more than enough water for all of their crops and livestock, even during the dry season, without any electricity. Each panel is 200 watts. Then it's attached to a pump. That pump can pump 5,000 liters every hour. Basically, it's unlimited amount of water for this entire village. That's incredible. And after we left Zimbabwe, we wanted to continue to give water to communities all across Africa. So we built more wells in Uganda, Somalia, and Cameroon. If you want to see more of what we did in Cameroon, there's a whole video about that coming soon on the Philanthropy Channel. Spending time in these villages really made me reflect on the importance of building wells. How it brings water to farms to feed the hungry, how it provides clean conditions for hospitals, and most importantly, how it helps the children of this next generation live long, healthy, healthy lives and build the future for all of these communities. We await a new dawn of clean drinking water. Water is life. And with some help from the locals, we finally finished a new bridge that this community can use for the next 100 years. 
Lives have been saved. Families will come together. The worries will be gone. The 100 wells we built in this video will change a lot of lives but not enough. Which is why before you go, I want to urge you all to go to beastphilanthropy.org slash wells or click the link in the description and donate money if possible. We're literally not profiting a dime off this video. 100% of the money we raise is going to go towards building more wells like you saw in this video all around the globe. I know it's weird that a YouTuber has to do all this stuff, but someone's got to do it. And if no one else is, we're going to do it. As yeah. you can tell, it really does change the lives of the communities where we build them. And finally, well 100. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Mr. B6000. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> wow, this is getting me emotional because I know the struggle. I know the struggle, trust me. Walking a thousand miles, walking for so long just to get some water. And at the end of the day, the water is not clean. So some of the times we use alum, this aluminium sulfate to put in the water to make all the dirt go down and then we have to, you know, get the clean one out and ha, ah, it's, it's kind of stressful. It's kind of stressful. And watching this, seeing how, seeing those happy, happiness, you know, all those kids' faces, seeing that they don't need to wake up like 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. just to get go to like the next village to get some water which at the end of the day is not even clean before they take a shower and but they take a bath and go to go to school. Mr Beast, he's man, he's he saved a lot of lives with this. He's saved a lot of life. It's just building building this a hundred well. It's a lot. It's a major problem, you know, water, getting a clean water electricity and all of that it's it's a huge problem and it's not like and it's not like there's no money in africa there's so much money in africa but the greedy people do not care about the lives of others so they tend to keep all of this thing for themselves while other people are starving the governments just care about themselves and their stomach and their, their families and it's so sad, but God bless this man, God bless Mr. Beast for this thing he's done in Africa. He has no idea how many lives he saved with this project. This was so nice to watch and I'm very glad I watched it. So good to know that there's still goodness in the hearts of people in this world. It's good to know that there's still hope for humanity, for people like Mr. Beast. It's just so nice to watch. Thank you so much for sharing this video with me. Thank you guys for watching the video too. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do not hesitate to give me a big fat thumbs up. Consider hitting a subscribe button as well. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Once again, stay safe, be kind, and bye.